way this works is we're going to take five randomly generated words and try to come up with a fully functioning story. However, the challenges that we have against us uh, are we have a 90 minute clock to see if we could come up with a story in that time. Terrify, seller, grip, straighten, toss. All right. So we start off in, in the future, right? And what we see is glimpses on TV, on newscasts, on news stories, the concept and the, the idea that water has now become scarce in this time, in this time frame, we're, we're in 2020, uh, 2053, water is scarce, water is worth more than gold, et cetera. So we start off with these news pops of various stories and titles about how water is now the number one commodity. We begin with our friend Ross sitting in his room, a few million bucks hit his bank account or his crypto account. All of a sudden there's a click at the door. Ross looks over. Just like that, the door gets blown off the hinges. CIA agents rush into the room. Rush take, uh, Ross takes off running. He gets, to, he gets to the fire escape. He slides down, pop, gets punched, handcuffed, etc., and loaded into the back of the van. The CIA take him to their headquarters or their offsite. They begin to sweat him. Through this, Ross tells him that his seller is a Johnny. The agents look at each other confused. We are now in Nigeria. We see a Johnny is finishing a deal, shaking hands. We get a sense of his lifestyle, money, cars, women, etc. We see him giving away water for free to the local community and, com and other African nations. Here on that day, as, as he finishes one deal, it's like going to the next. A British dealer is awaiting him in the patio. They have a quick convo, but it's asked why, but the British dealer asks him why he doesn't sell directly to governments in, in Western countries. Uh, Johnny explains that for years, Western societies plundered African nations for their resources. Why should he help them? He's already selling them, selling water to their people outside the regulations. And to him, that's enough help. The British dealer says he thinks he's wrong. Johnny looks at him in a fit of rage. He wants to kill this man, perhaps. Instead, he calms down. He calms down and tells him he won't take what he says as an insult. Perhaps the British man understood. Perhaps not. Here on in, that evening, after all these deals have been completed, Johnny turns on the television. He goes to the various stations, soccer or football, and other comedy bits, to when he stops on the screen of the local news. He sees that the president of Nigeria has been assassinated. There's much speculation, but then all of a sudden, a picture of him shows up. He's shocked. This can't be, he says, or what is going on? At the bottom, it said that there's a price tag of 100 million. Phone call happens. His right-hand man picks it up. Are you sure? Okay, I'll let him know. Johnny is told 100 million alive, bounty placed on his head 10 million with proof of death he notices his guards are watching the television too and overheard this information we hear a commotion outside the door the door breaks open and it's men and it's his men trying to capture him apparently this news has spread past this phone call johnny gets up and tries to run his old men try to stop him he then goes to fight him but it's a losing battle his right hand man comes in and saves his life by killing two or three of of these of these men the right hand man tells him to go through the X passageway, at least a helicopter pad, get it on. There's a plane, there's a helicopter waiting for him. Pilot takes off right as an RPG is being fired at close distance, but it misses. Flies off into the night. It's now, it's now day. The helicopter is flying over desert sands. Johnny lands in the area that seems uninhabitable. A man lurks out of the shadows. We don't know whether he's a friend or foe. Johnny gets off the helicopter and walks over to this strange man. The strange man extends his hand and they greet each other. As they walk together, the man explains that the U.S. has taken over, has now taken over his water supplies. To make matters, matters worse, his kids have been taken hostage. Johnny is beside himself. He wants to know where his kids and his rest of his family, his family has been taken. A friend says he's unsure where they've been taken, but they will need to get out of the desert and back into city, into the city if they are to have any hope in, in finding them. Perhaps... He can broker a deal to save his family. So, so, Johnny's wife and kids have been taken by a man named Aminu, who just happens to be working with the person who greeted Johnny, but he doesn't know that yet. So, Johnny finds this information, finds out that Aminu has his wife and kids. Maybe an informant comes by and lets Johnny know to meet Aminu on his island. Johnny is still with his right-hand man, Kubra. So, they go to this unmarked location, 
on this island through boat. They take a speedboat over to the shack. They enter the safe house. It's dark. Jo Johnny sees his wife and kids. They, they get excited to see him but they're guarded by a man with an AK. And Aminu's like, you know, the US government has asked me to help capture you. And I'm willing to let your, your wife and kids go if you are if you turn yourself in and come with me. And Johnny's like, you know, Aminu, we've done business for so many years. How could you do this to me? Aminu's like, business is business. A hundred million dollars is a lot of money. And Johnny says, what if I can give you something that's worth more than a hundred million dollars? And Aminu says, I'm listening. He says, I'll give you 80% of my water sources in Nigeria if you release my wife and kids. Now Aminu's interested. He's like, okay, I also want your distribution channels too. I want contacts of everyone you do business with, all your routes, whatever. And then maybe we could come to a deal. And Ajani says, okay, but you have to help my family and I get away safely. And they go to shake hands and you hear a bang. Two shots fired. Aminu gets shot, and the guard by uh, Johnny's wife and kids also gets shot. Johnny turns around. It's his right man, Han Kubra. He's holding a pistol. He's killed Aminu, and he's killed the guard. And he reveals himself. I'm Agent Kubra. You're under arrest, Johnny. Can't escape now. We have you. I've been uh, leaking my my location this entire time to the CIA. They'll be here soon. Just come with us peacefully. We can do a deal where your wife and kids get out safely, but you're you're going to be spending the rest of your life in prison for crimes against humanity and water, illegal water distribution. Now, Johnny and Kubra have been working together for years, and he had no idea. Kubra has been in this operation for years. He's been undercover. Johnny can't believe it. He's got his hands on his head. And then we hear a, a bang. Kubra's been shot now. Now, who's shot Kubra? It's a Johnny's kid who just got a gun from the dead guard. He picked it up and shot Kubra. And Johnny goes over and takes the, the AK from his son, his seven-year-old son, points it at Kubra's head. He's about to shoot him and then just spares him. Why? I don't know. Just spares him. Gets out with his wife and kids. Escapes on the speedboat. Time goes by. We see him on a ship. He's just getting off with a bunch of other, it looks like refugees. You know, they got hoods over them and stuff like that. Looks like they... They're trying to escape. Years later, we see a Johnny on a farm. He's not in a mansion anymore. He doesn't have fancy cars. He's living a, a modest lifestyle on a farm. Someone knocks at his door. It's a person that usually buys crops from him. This time, he's not buying crops. This time, this person pulls out a gun and says, I know who you are. And then he has the gun pointed at a Johnny. But then this person gets shot. And then who shoots this person? None other than Kubra. Years later, he's found Johnny. And Kubra looks at a Johnny and says... Now we're even. And then the story ends. With one legit one minute to go. <laughs> That's pretty good. I mean, there's so many holes, but I mean, for, for the first draft of a story, like that's very entertaining and interesting. 